morning. Uh, we are welcoming you to a great hour of time that we believe that the Lord, our God, the Creator, love will lead us through this moment. Father, I thank you right now for this time and this space. I thank you for this moment in time. Now we pray, Father, that something will be said to uplift someone's spirit. Someone will be something that will be said to help someone remain on course. And we thank you in advance for the revelation that will be revealed as we yield our spirits to our Creator. In Jesus' name, those in agreement say, Amen. Amen, amen. And I just want to do one thing in honor of someone who we're going to miss. That's why we lost the soldier. You already know that. So you know the Chadwick Boseman. Hopefully that's how he kind of snake died. He passed. But what do I want to say to you, Mark, because you talked about people doing what they're supposed to do. So, so I want to say this to all of us who loved our Black family who appreciate our Black people, who fought so hard and so well that we did not even know what he was going through. Thank you for that last fiery, steadfast example of taking it all the way through. This person gave us the experience of the Black Panther and he brought his best to that. Uh, of film, and we know that. He gave us James Brown, and, and he let us check James Brown channel his spirit through him so that we could see some things and learn some things that, that we had not witnessed. Um, he was also Thurgood Marshall. He, he played Thurgood Marshall. Um, Jackie Robinson. So uh, while it does my heart, I, I was hurt from that. I said, um, I'm also going to say thank you. And I pray that every one of you all who have experienced not just the talent of someone, but the dedication and devotion of someone who is dedicated and committed to their craft, you, you'll see how it comes across and how it's able to touch other people. Hopefully, you will all learn from that and learn to show up, to show up in that kind of way, devoted to being and leaving on this earth what we sent to help and uplift other people simply because we were here and we were born. So, you know, rest in peace and God bless the family of um, Chadwick. And that's what I wanted to say today. I didn't say it at 8 o'clock service, but um, it's worth being said. Oh, definitely. It is very close to me as well, and I, every, every one of those movies you mentioned, I really enjoy his artistry and his gift, his ability to connect uh, in a way that was it felt almost supernatural because he gave up such an energy. Mm -hmm. um, that was, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? He gave up such an energy. And so to read what I've read and understand what I've understood, I thought I didn't just know things that I said. And in each one of these things, this brother was going through this. For four years, so, you know. Again, right. absolutely, it, it shows the strength of vision and how your spirit, even when your flesh, his, his spirit didn't die, but even when your flesh has been invaded by something that it just, it, and it's not winning that battle, your spirit can still win the battle. Your essence can be left here for others to view. So good, good, good good, good, good in the sense of this. Thanks for leaving us an example right. of devotion and commitment to a craft. So that's it.
we got a wonderful message. And I'm ready. You ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, are you going to start? Yeah. Um, this, this, these words that we will rename we, we this message, get on up. Um, you know, it's the name of his movie, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I was like the James Brown movie was get on the yeah I was like I was like this is amazing I've been thinking about get on up for a month for at least a week and a half mm -hmm. and I started reading the lesson and everything and I said now does this coincide um with that um uh, but I heard this is what the message should be, I believe. Mm -hmm. And so when I look at the word get, one day I was, I became intrigued with words. And as I was studying the different origins of, of certain words that started maybe in Sanskrit or in, uh, uh, Chinese or whatever the case may be Jill I became interested in the word get and I learned the Hebrew it meant queen up to acquire to buy and when you look at the symbols the ancient symbols of how they wrote the word get get was that sign is the sun over the horizon. That sign is, it's the reading from uh, right to left. And so you're reading the sun over the horizon and then that other word is seek. The other word is seek. And so, when you look at the ancient word for get, you look at the ancient letters, you get to understand it is the, to acquire zealously look, looking over the horizon. And it is the desire that, that same word is represented in Proverbs chapter 19, where it says, Desire without knowledge is not good. To be over hastening is to is to sin and miss the mark. Uh, gathering for the seeds. So it is about gathering coin or seeds so that you can afford to purchase what you need. So when I look at, I was inspired to look up the word, what get meant. It meant, it had a, 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 a root word to it. And that was to gather the coin that you can gather the coin, gather the seed that, and so that you can afford what you would need. And that's when I realized that This was about a gathering knowledge. And so when I looked up the word get, and it said, I say, get on up. This, there are things that you are supposed to acquire right now that you should be zealous for. And you should, when we go through seasons of missing the mark, and we, uh, on Ruth, you don't know if you heard that, but she said, there was a point in her life this week where she missed the mark mm -hmm. and she needed to figure out what is happening. Where am I at in here? And I said, that, that's amazing because all I had this on here in terms of the Hebrew word for sin was shatah, which meant to be surrounded by a strong fence or to make and take a misstep. To take a, a misstep, take a missed the mark. And go ahead. You know, one of the things I thought about when you read the thing about get, and it says it is about gathering for the seed. That's what we have here. And again, it's about gathering coin so that you can afford to purchase what you need. 
you know, and the gathering of the seeds, hopefully you'll, you'll get to see that you gather certain seeds so that you can have a certain outcome, right? So that you can purchase what you need. But this is why, you know, if, if you're in that space where you, 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 you know that this space is new, it's uncertain and it's new, and you are embracing it, remember this, you are always gathering seed. What you have to determine, and I have to determine, that are you gathering the kind of seed that's going to allow you to purchase what you want? Meaning, if the seed, if what, you're, what you're feeding your mind, um, does what you're feeding your mind right now, will that take you where you want to go? Will, 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 will that translate into something that will help you get through this door that somewhere, somehow, you know it's there, you don't know all, you don't have all of the pieces, but you know it's there, and you at least have the idea and the concept. See, get is about gathering seed, and we're gathering seed all the time. All the time. If I'm looking at something, if I'm reading something, if I'm connecting myself to something, I'm gathering something. Because I'm collecting thoughts, seeds from all the thoughts and all of the words that I am exposing myself to. So, and so if we go to slide number four, get is about being zealously on guard. And so I learned that the word get is and if you look at the ancient letter that's up there is it's about being zealous looking over the horizon when it's about the in the morning and making sure that you are on guard and one of the examples the ancients used was the bird who will guard the nest and it's so it's about having protect over the nest and eggs from predators, and so get is about seeing in your life where the predators may try to establish themselves and or stop your progress. And these predators can be manipulators, whatever it is, uh, emotional vampires that come into your life and they interfere with your forward progress, even in your thoughts. Absolutely. And, and, and here what you're saying is it, that you, uh, you guard over and protect the nest and eggs from predators. Well, this is why we, we, we have to become whole in our thinking because some people, I, I, I've had someone most recently try to resolve a conflict about something that they let in their lives and they continue to refer to this person as a predator. And the but, 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 because you wanted to call this person a predator, okay, opportunist, as far as what I was concerned, right. um, you know, you, you have to know and recognize the predators in your life. And predators are in our people uh, or something that doesn't uh, uh, make you feel the way you want to feel. And sometimes people, we use emotions constantly as our only radar, not true. Emotions are um, indicators, feelings are indicators, and you should never tell yourself that what you feel isn't real to you. But it is not necessarily based on absolute truth, it's just real to you. And so one of the things I wrote when I said in the last service is that we talked about guarding something and how the word of God says to guard your heart because it's the wellspring of life. And when you're going to guard something to get here, because I, I want you to hear how to live this out and how to position yourself to walk this out. And that is this. Here's the truth. If you don't value something, you're not going to guard it. Or you're going to guard it according to its value. So uh, the way you insure a car, you may not insure a pair of shoes. You still, you still have value to them, but you'll insure a car. You'll, 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 you'll get life insurance for your family. That's huge. Why? Because of the value and the work that's there. And so whenever we're talking about something, getting something, and guarding something so you can get something, you have to first recognize the value in it. Even with yourself, if you're gonna even value your heart, if you're gonna to get to where you wanna to get to, and uh, uh, because where your, 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 your treasure is, that's where your heart is gonna be. So 
one of the things that we have to deal with, Ron, if we're going to get on up, we, you, you have to have an incentive and a good enough reason for you to do it. That ain't, that ain't just biblical. That's a psych, uh, psychological truth as well. And that is, listen, how, how, not how much do you want it, how valuable is it to you? And that will determine whether you get up. There are people who, who, who didn't do a, a, a whole bunch of drawing in their choices of life, but if they are an addict, that drug, that desire is such, has is so valuable, so needed, that they'll, that, 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 that they'll sell almost anything. That's, the, that, that's what drive will do to you and for you. If, if what you're going for or what you want is worth, and that is one of the situations we're going to be, uh, truths that we have to come to. Do I really want this? Do I really want this marriage? Do I really want to, to lead in ministry? Do, do, do I really want this? And how do I know? I've got to see what it's going to cost me. That's why I get it's about those coins. That's why it's about getting coins, collecting the seeds, the coins. What coins are you collecting so that you can get with where your heart and your mind and your spirit is telling you that you're ready to do? Get is about being zealously on guard. It's amazing that you're saying that. It says it is man can guard you. You can be a guard over your family. You can be a guard over your None of your possessions, you can be it. So it is about guarding what has been placed under your authority, mm -hmm. what has been placed under your purview, under your reach. And when you get it, it is about protecting what you have acquired. And so when you are saying that, you basically say, get that word would surprise me was about protecting what you value mm -hmm. and acquiring what you value, what's going to help you in your future. And, and, and this is why I run apathy, which is uh, a lack of concern. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that term. This is why it is, it is so dangerous because when people are apathetic, not M, apathy, they don't care about anything. And we try to figure out, you know, why do we, why are these people coming to this group? Why do they keep tearing up? Because they don't value it. And until you do, but guess what? You can see somebody who would throw trash on the ground, who, is, who, who will not care about their neighborhood, their, their, their women, their children, not take care of their children. But their tennis shoes are clean. <laughs> and you better not touch on them. And you better not step on them. Why is that? Because whatever you care about, I know what you care about because I see what you're taking care of. That's how I know. It ain't what you say, it's what you do. But guess what? If you are have become lethargic to life, you can get up. There's a way to get up, there's a space to get up. And this is what I said to them early, which is always going to be true. When the student is ready, the teacher will be. When you are tired enough, and I'm tired enough, and I know I want less of something and more of something else. And I'm not talking about material wise. I'm talking about in terms of my spirit, my growth, and where I am. Um, that's that. That's what my surrender will show the universe and anybody else who 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 wants to sow some of these seeds but don't want my resistance. That's when they'll show up. Because if I, if I require you to move in force, and I cause you to sin. Or you decide to move in force because you worry so much about me that you called yourself to sin and miss the mark. Jeremiah 18, 1, the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Arise and go death and go down to the potter's house. And there I will call you to hear my words. And so get is about acquiring revelation it's about acquiring um the words the spiritual words revelations like what you're doing right now as you partake in this communication that we're having mm -hmm. and so it says 
and then went down to the potter's house and behold he was working at the wheel and the vessel that he was making from clay was spoiled in the in the hand of the potter so he made it over reworking it into another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to make it and so um uh, in that I want you all to, if I, if you can, I want you to see that sometimes we will suffer. And thank you for putting that up there. We will, we will suffer because we fail to see that God is remaking us. We fail to see He's reworking us. We fail to see He's reshaping us, and it may, it takes sometimes life. The lifetime pivotal moments. It takes uh, very instruct and instructive moments or moments that seem to cut in on you. But you have to be able to allow yourself to be able to be molded into the what the, the what the uh, what the spirit wants you to be right. and be reshaped. Right, and, and notice that it says here that the clay in God's hand was spoiled. Mm -hmm. In the potter's hands, what it said, was spoiled. Right. Meaning, and then he made it over, he worked it, he called it to be another vessel, another container. Mm -hmm. Okay, not just a person, but a, a vessel, was a, a, a pot to put something in, a container, a house. And so sometimes, and you can see the desire for reformation of your spirit and renewal of your mind it's because somewhere along the line you you are who you are but 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 whatever else shaped you or whatever else tied in and 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 the the denials that stayed and we talked about the grief cycle and the, the the anger and the bargaining and the depression that 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 you know you that that kind of vessel uh the the power of the universe couldn't do a whole bunch of it, so he reworked it into another vessel. And so, why is that? Into something useful, from something that had become useless for those reasons, for reasons of of of, of, of hurt and pain and um, unresolved conflict from way back when. Somehow, this same vessel that was sent here as a, a pristine uh, vessel to be used has now showed up as, a, as something spoiled. But what am I saying to you? Volunteer yourself, surrender yourself, student, make yourself ready so that the teacher can come in and rework you. He ain't gonna make you all the way over into another vessel. Notice it was the same clay. What a new lump of clay. It's the same lump of clay. But now that clay is reshaped in a way so that all those parts of you that were working against you can now work for you, the way they were supposed to work for you before they were injured. Well, I share this week the work of God requires major adjustments. And I shared it because I wanted to communicate that if you can't make adjustments, then you're not you're not qualified to do the work of God because the work of God meaning the work of your soul, the work of these different changes, it requires you to make major choose to change certain things in your disposition or in your position in life so that you can make these adjustments. And so when the scripture says, uh, in uh, 1 Peter uh, 4, 12 through 19, it says, Beloved, do not be amazed and bewildered at the fiery ordeal which is taking place to test your quality as though something strange, unusual, or alien to you, your position, where we're befallen, befallen you. So what I just said, it says right there in the word, it says, don't don't allow yourself to become confused 
when you are going through some major fiery ordeals or you're being, seems like you're being cut in on, interfered on, plans being uh, stopped or obstacles thrown in your way, uh, which is taking place to test your quality. As, so don't think of something strange that's happening to you. And on my slide, which I believe is slide number eight, it is earned sense of esteem as well as proof of our competency. Tests are not given because God is in doubt as to the outcome, but because we need to grow. To be untested and unproven is also to be unaware of all that we are. And so if you bring it back here to over right here, we I have I had to understand and and it's amazing how this applies even more today than when it was written at another time. And that is tests come into your life to show you who you are, what you're made of, what you're what's not there, what is there, and to reveal your strengths as well as your shortcomings. Mm -hmm. And some of these things that we go through in the grief cycle, they are actual tests to our spirits. Yes, sir. Even if you're in a business, you know, when they do certain uh, business models, uh, 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 leadership, they, they test your, they, 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 they see if you, meaning once you go through the course, they, they see if you have, if, the, if you have, uh, learn what they wanted you to learn by testing your competencies in right. that area. Right. To see if you understand, if you are competent in terms of did you did you get it? Right. Did you get it when you were when you were being taught and when you were being instructed? Did you get it? How how am I going to test you to see if you got it? Why do I need to know if you if you got it or not? Because I plan to send you out somewhere. Mm -hmm. This is why, you know, if, if you go on a service, you got to go through boot camp. They got to test your competency. They got to see if you have what it takes before they send you out there to represent. Right. You know, and, and, and so it's the same here in terms of what you just read. Right. Why? Because you need to know if you don't feel, it tests your qualities, but you need to know your qualities too for you. Right. For you. You know, I had a conversation with someone just, just very recently. And the, the conversation um, was really about, at the end of the day, and I'm going to see what you said again about, about the self-esteem part, but, but, but really that, this is what you said, earned sense of self-esteem as well as, it, it was an earned sense of self-esteem as well as proof of our competencies. And I want you to hear what it says, earn. If, you, if your self-esteem comes because people have been complimenting you, when you get in there and, 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 and you don't have all those folks in your ears, um, if you don't have, if you don't live this Bible, if you don't live this word, the truth of that word in terms of what it means, um, and, you, and you're out there and you can't go in your pocket and on your phone because you're in a situation, listen, that's, that's when you're going to know that you have that competency in the right place that is on the inside. It's what you're carrying away. But if, if you think that self-esteem can be given, that's not true. There was a moment that I could not be to fold what I used to be. And I had to rely on the earned self-esteem mm -hmm. that I had gathered over the years to know that, as somebody else said, uh, mission accomplished. Mm -hmm. you, you, you've done mm -hmm. the part that you were supposed to do. And so if I had to be tested so that I could see that I was competent and that God was competent. And Paul will say it this way, it's one of these scriptures. He said, I didn't come to you with eloquent words. Right. Because I didn't want your growth or your confidence to be to rest on man's um, knowledge, but on the power, on the, on the spirit's power. Not on the wisdom of man, but on the power, the spirit's power. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we, 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 our confidence is in the wisdom of man. What man said, how man said we are, what they say we were called for. You know, God, God got something for you to do. I mean, that's everybody. 
please. Everybody was in here. That's true about everybody. And I'm not saying somebody saying that is not what you ever needed to hear, but I do want you to know that's true about everybody. And no one has to tell you that you can know that. You can know that and then you can begin to go get it, and get them coins for what you need to do. But the bottom line is, Paul said that he didn't want this competencies, these people competencies, to rest on man's wisdom, but on the power of God. And this is where we're trying to get to right now. Oh, okay. And so, yeah. And so, if we go to slide number um, nine, failure is the failure is the humiliation of your false self and the crucible of character formation. Let's bring that back to me, please. Failure is the humiliation of your false self and the crucible of character formation called suffering. And so it, I had to learn the hard way that my character and sometimes is being formed and it was called, called the crucible because I was being heated by external, external forces, external uh, circumstances. And I began to suffer, but I didn't realize, and it took me a moment to get that my character was being formed and I was being called and allowed to suffer. And I remember standing in, 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 in my doorway at the front of my house and said, looking out in my yard and saying, is this what they go through, God? Is this what they go through? Which was a testament that I had had it pretty good, but now I was now seeing the effect of life. I was now feeling the effects of life. I was feeling the effects of grief. I was feeling the effects of grief or the Kubler-Ross grief cycle. And so as I stared out in that yard and I said, is this what they go through? That what that meant to me at that point is God, I've helped people for years and I've ministered to them and I've encouraged them and I've said all these different things. But now I am feeling what some of them have communicated to me. And when I said, is this what they go through? I realized that I, my, there were some things, some false humiliations or some things that I had created that were now being humbled. Some uh, illusions that I, I had created that was guarding me, and, but it had become a stronghold. And so even when I said, is this, is this what they go through? I felt uh, humiliated even saying that because that meant that I was trying to live a, a, a privileged life and that I had to learn that my identity was not tied to my failure and my failure was not tied to my identity. And I had, it was not about who respected me or whatever the case may be. I had to, go through these, these different stages, Jill, of understanding of grief and, and anger and depression and you name it, so that I could understand that the, it, these, these were actual walls, but they were things to overcome. Right, and, and I, did you read this while I was going it was on the same slide? It says, my worth was not tied up with what I did. It did, yes who respects me or who doesn't respect me. Right. One of the things I made in the other service is that while your work is not tied up in what you did, your rewards are. Your rewards are according to your deed. The reason why I'm, 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 I want to talk to you so that share this, because I want you to embrace these words without that trick being in there that will come and rob you later, where your work is not tied up in what you did, but what you did doesn't disappear because you don't like it. Your deeds are. And there's not there's no seed that you plant. If I plant a seed, 
that is not good, a good seed, and then I go plant a seed that is good, that good seed is not going to cancel out. Cancel, cancel. It's not going to cancel out that bad seed. I'm going to have to face them both. I'm going to have to live with the, in, in that reality. And so my work isn't that, but my, but, 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 but my rewards are. And so why is that? Because sometimes you have moved on and your work is not tied to what you did, but, but there is still, but what you did is still in your space. Um, and it's, it is still part of your reality and it's still part of what you've done. And, uh, 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 and it still has to be confronted. And this, this is why you have to forgive yourself. See, forgiving yourself doesn't mean that you won't, you won't ever feel what you've done or you won't feel the mistakes that you made. You, you may, and eventually it'll probably try to fade away. But like Paul said, he said, I had a thorn. I, I asked for removed three times. It was still there. But it was a reminder of him not to become conceited. Right. It was reminded to him that 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 voice, that voice of the accuser, he said it's a buffer from Satan, that voice of that accuser, that adversary, that wants to not let you forget just how off you have been. We have to live with those kind of things, and we can live with those kind of things. And I think I was saying something, saw something recently, and it's really true. The way that you live with those kind of things is that you now you live your life so purposefully. You live, you, this is how you make amends for that. Sin no more. Uh, uh, just don't, don't miss that mark again. Uh, 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 aim, become better by that truth instead of bitter by that truth. And so there was another uh, thing you had. I don't know if you read it. It was right before this one, Juan. It was, um, I'm just, I don't know what number it is. It was, uh, the one that says that the life you once knew will seem to disappear. Yeah. It's two slides before. I got it. Yeah. So what you what it says is slide number seven. Number seven. Okay. It says the life you once knew will seem to dis disappear. It will at times feel like a veil, and that's it. It will sometimes it will feel like a veil sometimes, which means it's 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 not as strong as it used to be. But but you know it's it, you know you you it's it's it's, it's still a part of your story, right. you know. And so you had uh, First Corinthians thirteen twelve here, and we will read. It says, "For now we are looking in a mirror that gives only a dim, blurred reflection of reality, as in a riddle or a nigger. But then, when perfection comes." We shall see in reality and face to face. I want to pause right there for a minute. You can take it back. <clears throat> what he's saying is when we mature, we're going to be able to look, we're going to be able to confront our realities. If you look up the word confront, it means face to face. Confrontational, it means face to face. And so what this is saying is there'll come a time when you'll be mature enough to see reality face to face. So that what, what happens around when I can't see reality face to face? Depression, denial, what's what? Anger. Why? Because I'm mad at what I don't like this space. And so go ahead. I had to learn not to run from my natural emotions. Mm -hmm. Not to run from fear. Not to run from my anger, not to run from uh, the feelings of depression, not to run from uh, the different fears. And I had to learn that sometimes it will feel like a veil, but I had to know you prophesy a part and you know a part, <laughs> right. and that I, I knew that I needed to have the courage to face what I was going through at the moments in my past, but I had no idea it would prepare me to be able to look at and confront situations in my life face to face. Mm -hmm. And so when we look at this uh, 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 Poo -poo Poo -poo uh, raw 
Ross grief cycle when Chadwick Boseman, when I uh, was sent a, a text of his passing and his transition. Uh, and it, it hit me, it was close to home. And it was also very, uh, it, it, it sent me someplace, a very strange place, because I had also seen that he had been tested and that he was able to produce in a season where he, he showed up at every moment of his life. Absolutely. And so, as you were just saying, it's about uh, the Kubler graph and how those natural emotions and just how, how we end up being connected to those, those things. I want to go back to slide seven real quickly because I want you to hear this. It says, but then when perfection comes, I want you to hear perfection not like Americans may do, but think about it as completion. So, so what if you read it this way? But then when, complete, when I complete the cycle, right. I will see in reality and face to face. Right. See, this is why getting up is a part of not quitting so that you can complete the cycle. All the things you have to learn. So when, when I complete that cycle, and then perfection comes, maturity comes when I complete this cycle, we shall see in reality and face to face. Now, right now, in this incompletion, right, I know in part imperfectly because I haven't completed the cycle, but then I shall know and understand fully and clearly, even in the same manner as I have been fully and clearly known and understood by God. So what you're going to go through is nothing new, but it's a cycle that your creator understands that you, you, you don't understand yourself. You don't see what he sees. You don't see what, 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 what reality sees. You don't see what the creator sees. And because you don't see what the creator sees, you don't see that version of yourself. You only see this version of yourself. You see the version of yourself that was injured. You see the version of yourself uh, 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 that was labeled a judge or, or whatever you did to yourself that have you stalling. See, there, there's, there, there's a given amount of time that we can use some of these natural emotions because at some point, denial is the spirit of truth. What I mean by that is stepping back from something and being patient and, 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 and giving ourselves an opportunity to understand it. it. That's a good thing. But then if we hang in there too long and these things become crutches, then that thing that came in our lives as a spirit of truth, that word, that that energy that was the spirit of truth, now the new energy is the spirit of the accuser and it's hard to get out of. Because now you've been there so long, you don't like what you did with your life, you're not loving your decision, someone else has, has, has accomplished their goals, have completed their cycle, now you see other people who have done the things that they set out to do and you did not do for reasons of depression, anger, whatever had you stalled and stuff. Now that accuser is, tell, is, is, is speaking to you. And this is why, again, um, what do you get to do? Get up. Finish the cycle. Complete it. Complete it. So that you can face that reality. You can look at that reality face to face. And not allow it to be an oppressor. With whatever happens. And something else will happen after this. Um, or a bully that have bullied you. Bullied you out of your desire to live life and to pursue and to complete a certain purpose. Get on up is, is when you face these dark nights, mm -hmm. these walls. If we go down to slide number 13, when you go through these different aspects of your life, which are, they are natural emotions, going through uh, denial, as you just said, it's, it's a natural uh, emotion. It's, it's something that all humans experience, and that is 
wanting to avoid being confused uh, or being in shock or in fear. Uh, when you go through anger and you're saying, uh, yes, yeah, some of us, we are trying to have a perfect record of just being compassionate, compassionate, or loving, 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 and not have and not having moments of anger. If you, if you, and when you have a moment of anger, that's a dark night, and the dark night of the soul is when you are now faced with certain consequences and certain things in the dark tunnel. And you have to now be able to summon the courage to be able to stand and withstand the pressure that it seems to become mounted on your soul. And so the, at each one of these uh, things on slide number 13, at each one of these uh, moments, it's a dark night and these dark, these dark nights are like walls, Jill. And I put that at the bottom. Walls are the dark nights of the soul on a mission. And so when you are on a mission, you must understand on this journey, on this journey called life, in this journey called life, you're going to have moments <laughs> where your progress seems to be permanently impeded or stopped. And you've got to get on up. You've got to acquire the knowledge, acquire the wisdom, acquire what is needed in this season and not run from it and let it become the topic of your life, but it become the one of the guiding forces in your life. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so this is what I want to do. I want us to read, go to James first, chapter five. Because there, there are steps to getting up. There, 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 you know, when, you're, when, you, when we're talking about getting up, we're not talking to your flesh, meaning to your physical body only. Because it is your spirit that moves your body. It's your animation is your spirit. When your spirit and your breath leaves your body, your body is no longer animated. It cannot move and do certain things. So, so this getting up and getting this body moving, it's, it, 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 there's a spiritual healing, a spiritual restoration um, for motivation and incentives and those things that will make a body get up. That's inner work. Okay? So let's go to James chapter 5. I'm going to start at verse 16. It says, Therefore, Confess your sins to one another, your false steps, your, your offenses, and pray for one another that you may be healed and restored. Anytime you read something that says, therefore, you say to yourself, what, what, is there for what? And that means you go up before then uh, uh, and read what, what is being said, and that's, that's where the therefore is really about. So if I go up some, I'm going to start at verse 5. It says, so wait patiently, James 5, 7, verse 7. So wait patiently, brothers and sisters, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits expectantly for the precious harvest from the land, being patient about it until it receives the early and late rain. What does it tell you? Don't quit. Stay in the cycle. Be, be expected. Listen, the same way you know that if you sow bad seed, that it showed up in your life, then apply that faith to the good seed. Apply that knowing, that truth to the good seed. Then guess what? If I play good seed, if I play the bad seed and I reap, and I reap this kind of fruit, then let me sow this kind of seed because what's the bottom line? If you put it in the fertile ground, it's going to grow. If the sun shine on it and the, and the early rain come, it's going to grow. And know that while it is still in seed form. Sometimes we want somebody to show us a basket full of fruit before we ever go plant a seed. And that should happen sometimes. But at some point, you're going to have to believe what you've already seen in these evidences and these examples given to you. And then you go plant the seed and you allow somebody else's faith to get you to at least plant the seed. But after that, it's got to be your faith. So this is what it says. 
Verse 8. You too, T-O-O. Be patient. Strengthen your heart. Keep them energized and firmly committed to God. That's your work. That's my work. Strengthen your heart. How do I do that? I keep my heart energized and firmly committed to God. Who is God to me? The Spirit of the Truth. The Creator. That's what's God to me. God is a title, not a name. So when you say God, what are you talking about? Because that's a title. What am I talking about? I'm talking about reality. God, help me face reality. Help me live in my reality. Help me not be overwhelmed and swept up in, in, and go into depression because I cannot deal with my reality. Help me see, see what you see and, and, and give me the eyes to be able to stay in this thing. Then it says, why? Because the Lord is coming. Verse 9. Do not complain against one another. These are, these are all the things that's going to help you get up, get your spirit in a position to help you get up. Do not complain against one another, believer, so that you will not be judged for it. Look! Exclamation point. The judge is standing right at the door. What is keeping some of us from going up, coming, uh, uh, getting up? Because you got this thing, you know, people always try to judge me. You know, that's why I ain't, I, I don't do this because I don't want nobody judge me. I don't tell them, that judge is at the door. You stop judging people then. Check your judgment. When you feel like somebody's judging you that much, ask yourself, why is, why is that in my ear? And am, am, am I hearing this? Is this a message coming to me so that I can evaluate myself? It's Say, a frequency. It's an energy. It's something that you get on. And so when you're saying, well, you know, people need to know I'm a giving person or people this and people don't listen, ain't nobody paying attention to you like that. And you got to be careful because you get on this energy frequency and then you start making decisions, life decisions on an illusion that's created by you to bring you comfort that is not truth. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we'll get to, to why even that truth is important. Here, and it says, look, the judge is standing right at the door. As an example, verse 10 says this, as an example, brothers and sisters of suffering and patience, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord as his messengers and representatives. Verse 11, you know we call those blessed, happy, spiritually prosperous, favored by God, who were steadfast and endured difficult circumstances. That's not who we call blessed. That's not how we use blessed. We go tell anybody, don't worry about it, you are blessed. They stood nothing. They will stood anything. Mm -hmm. We use, we, we call people who have dropped out and quit blessed. Now, in, in another sense, sense of, guess what? Um, it ain't over. Sure, we can tell them that. You're not stuck. Sure, we can tell them that. G, you know, uh, forgiveness, Jesus, forgiveness is the way and it, it, it is the truth, and it is the life. Forgiveness, forgiving yourself, receiving forgiveness, it is going to put you back on the path, the way. It's going to put you back in the truth, and it's going to get you back to life. That's what the Spirit, not Jesus' name, but who, 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 and what was the representation of this? What was that? Deliverance. Deliverance from Spirit on lockdown. Listen, if you allow that forgiveness in your life, absolutely. Um, these are the things that will come your way. So you know we call those blessed who were steadfast and endured difficult circumstances. Well, that's not true. Folks want, folks want to just be called blessed because they got some material things or their life look a certain way in terms of the measures of the world. But that's not the measures of your spirit. Remember, I'm talking to you and to me about getting up. And how we position our spirit because it is your spirit that animates you and make cause you get up at the end of the day. If your spirit can't get up, your flesh can't get up. You understand that? So it says, You have heard about the patient endurance of Job and you have seen the Lord's outcome. You got to see the Lord's outcome in some of these people's lives. That's why I can talk about Chadwick to say, Listen, for anybody who understands, who sees, just was in front of us. Remember this, or oh, oh, if you read the articles, he was still working. He was still making movies. He was still doing that and going back and getting his treatment. He was still doing what he had to do until the last drop. Guess what that, that, that that's, that's my job example for 
uh, August 30th, 2020. Guess what? Guess what? His flesh may have been sick, but his spirit wasn't sick. That's why he keep getting up. Even though his flesh was suffering because his spirit wasn't sick. I'm saying that to you to keep your spirit away. God, your heart is the wellspring of life. And you will get up when everything about your circumstances says no. But if you neglect your spirit and then get into one of these moments, it's going to be very hard because it's your spirit that sustains you in time of trouble. Then it says, since the Lord is full of compassion, is merciful, but above all, my fellow believers, do not swear, here we go, either by heaven or by earth or with any other oath, but let your yes be a truthful yes. And your no be a truthful no, so that you may not fall under judgment. Why am I feeling judged? Why do I feel like this, this thing won't move? You know why? Because my when my yes to the Ron isn't truthful, I mislead him. When his yes to me isn't truthful, when, when if he tells me something that he's going to do just so that he don't want to be fussed at or he don't want to feel bad, but don't have any plans to do it. Guess what you do? You mess with the ecosystem of the spirit. Because once I trust you, and then you keep doing things where I can't trust you, but then you keep insisting, we keep insisting that we love each other, then that love is going to be false. There's no such thing as me really loving you and trusting you. That's why faith is, faith is without faith, it's impossible to believe God, um, to, to please God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. You understand? So, what's what's the deal here? How are we falling under judgment? It says, "Be uh, and your no. Let your yes be a truthful yes, and your no be a truthful no, so that you may not fall under judgment." We are ways. We are so connected that when you mislead me, that's a spell. When you manipulate me, that's a spell. Because when I trust you and I think we're connected, I am now going to alter my life in according, according to what you told me was true. And this is how some of us are up under judgment right now. Why can't I get up? Because the way the judgment is on you, the way the judgment is on me, because I'm not being honest. I'm not speaking from, it says anything you do in doubt is sin. Anytime you tell me you absolutely sure about something and you know you're not, that's it. See, it's okay to say, I don't know, I'll try, you know, or let, let me see what I can do. Be honest with the person. Why? So I can position myself and stay on my path or the one can stay on his path. Because when I don't do that and we move each other, we move each other out of, out of God's way, path for us. And that's a crime. Judgment. Judgment is for criminals. That's a crime. In the spirit realm. Why do you need to know that? So that you won't sit around still wondering what, what, what's going on. What's going on is I'm not being truthful about with my intent. And I'm misleading man, which means I'm also moving and getting in the way of the spirit of God. Then it says this, verse 13. Here we go. Is anyone among you suffering? He must pray. Is anyone joyful? He is to sing praises to God. Is anyone among you sick? He must call for the elders, the spiritual leaders of the church, and they are to pray over him. Now, you know, we got some social distance going on. That's okay. We got a prayer line that you can go to right now. But guess what? Guess what? If you are suffering, you must pray. And then it talks about uh, what you want to do if your emotion and your, if you're joyful. There's a response to joy. You, then you go to the elders. Then it says this. And, they'll, and the prayer of faith will restore the one who is sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. There you go. We needed that, we needed that forgiveness. Then it says this. Therefore, now we're back to 16. Therefore, this is why you're going to do that. Everything that I just said. This is why you're going to confess your sins one to another. Wait a minute. Your false steps and your offenses. You know why? Because you told us so that I can pray for you a righteous prayer, a fervent prayer. People having to figure you out and unscramble your eggs and decode all of your coded language 
because you don't want to confess your faults because somewhere along the line you think you're going to be judged. You already judged. I told someone you have never admitted that you are wrong. You have never admitted. You know what? I misled you on that. You've never admitted that you were defensive and you were always trying to outwit me in my thinking. You've never acknowledged these things. And so because you've never acknowledged these things, you 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 are unable to confess your false steps and your offenses. And I was able to say what you have in me is you don't have me sticking to a certain truth, even if it comes out, if it's not right and sticking somewhere, you see me admitting and saying, here's where I dropped the ball. Here's where I said something wrong. Here is where I was overly anxious or whatever. And I said, you have me confessing. I said, but you never, you don't ever do that. And it becomes difficult to share with you, to talk with you, and to be in a relationship with you, because to be in a relationship with you is like trying to spin plates because of this passive aggressive energy. That's it. That's it. And listen, when you're connected and when somebody's really in a relationship with you, and the love is the kind of love that God is that that the universe is talking about. That, that where I love you as I love myself. See, when you tell me certain things, I make decisions based on what you say. Listen, listen, listen. Those people who love you and who are connected to you, they make decisions based on what you say. So don't, don't just start throwing stuff out there, trying to entertain people, trying to impress people. Because if we are truly connected, I'm going to internalize what you say. My heart is going to be open to what you say. So if I make a decision off of what you say and I make a decision off of a lie, you not only trip you up, you trip me up. And when you trip me up or I trip you up that way, guess what? We affect all of the lives that we were sent here to be a light to. See, it's so much bigger than, than, than your feet of what happened a long time ago. So this is why I said, confess your sins one to another, but your false steps, not your conclusion. Yeah, I, I can see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. What were your false steps? Be clear. So that we can hold each other accountable, and most of all, so we can pray a righteous prayer to, 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 to stop the bleeding in the community that eventually would drain all of us because then you're going to come try to suck some of my blood. And before you know it, we're, we're all ashy white, drained, uh, walking dead uh, zombies. No. It's your false steps. Yeah. And, if you, and if you stay in your cycle, guess what that cycle going to give you once you get to the end? All you got to do is when we say back engineer, you'll see all the little false steps that you can share with somebody when you come out of it so that they can pray the right prayer and sometimes that releases them from some of the, that false step energy that you brought into their space when you, when, when you were in your cycle of work. We have to confess our sin. And then it says the heartfelt, why? Wait a minute. Confess it to one another, your false steps, your offenses, and pray for one another that you may be healed and restored. The heartfelt and persistent prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. Uh, when put into action and made effective by God, it is dynamic and can have tremendous power. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, with the same physical, mental, and spiritual limitations and shortcomings. And he prayed intensely for it not to rain, and it did not rain on the earth for three years and six months. So I'm going to jump to verse 16. And this says this, verse 19 says this. My brothers and sisters, if anyone among you strays from the truth and falls into error, and another one turns him back to God, not to my truth, not to you offended me, and I want you to know how much you offended me, okay? I need to get over it. If I'm offended too much, then I need to go to the throne and find out why am I constantly offended 
by human beings. When I already know human beings have flaws, and I know that by my own life. Listen, my brothers and sisters, if anyone among you strays from the truth and falls into error, and another one turns him back to God, let the, let the latter one know that the one who has turned a sinner from the error of his way will save that one's soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. That is, obtain the part of many sins committed by the one who has been restored. When you mislead me, and I mislead you, not only do we affect each other getting up, but there's a whole lot of people who will be getting up if we were free. If we were not tying each other up and holding each other down because of those fears of, I think you had on one of your, 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 your slides, that, that let me find it, about fear and about fear rejection and let me go to it. It was very good. You said it earlier. Here we go. You said uh, the process, you said he will keep me behind the wall until I get to the root of my fears. We've got to get to the root of our fears. Or we're going to keep tying each other up. When, and breaking each other's flow. Then it says that happened by the process of spiritual reduction. Can I see your hand? Mm -hmm. Okay. The process of spiritual reduction. Then it says the first wall. My fear is the fear of failure. The second wall. My fear is the fear of rejection. Um, my fear, the third one is my fear is shame. Shame that comes when I've been rejected after I failed. The process, fear, rejection, shame. And I think you said I could despise the process. But what is my point to you? Um, oftentimes, here's what we're dealing with, the fear of failure, and then that fear of failure uh, is actually the fear of rejection. This is why when you think about the Kubler, am I pronouncing it right, that, that, that chart, the, 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 the goal is acceptance. What is the opposite of rejection? Acceptance. What do we have to do to, to walk in the power of the Spirit? We have to accept Jesus. What does it mean to accept Jesus? To accept the way? What is the way? Forgiveness. What is the way? Truth. So that we can get to life. What are we accepting? Are we accepting uh, uh, just a gospel, some words that people spoke? Or are we accepting the true spirit behind acceptance? So it makes sense to me that acceptance is the place you are when your heart is open. It's the, what you're saying is, I am ready to receive. The student is ready, teacher. And then you tell your mind, I'm ready. And then you start giving yourself those why questions. Why, why, why do I keep going through this? So that your mind can, and your memory can help you see why you keep going through this versus why people are doing this to you. Then you get away from what they're doing and why they're doing what they're doing. And then you get into that space that says, what do I do with this space? I've already done it. I've already made these mistakes. Now, what am I to do with this information? Because that's all I have. Can't change the past, but I, what I can do is get you the future. But what's the goal here? Confess your missteps. Your false steps. Confess them to each other. Your offenses. Ron, I'm angry. I'm offended. See, I don't say, just to say I'm offended, that's not enough. That's not enough. That's not enough for him to change. If I say it to him, and that's not enough for me to change. Tell me what my offense is. Tell me what you're offended by. Tell me what your offense is so I'll know what to do. Why? So that if there's something blocking our flow, this, this, this continuity that we have as a, as a, as a, a creation of the universe, guess what? We can, we, we can remove all that stuff and we can get into the flow. Why? Because there's a whole bunch of folks who wait for us to bring our best to the table. We can talk about Chadwick Boseman because he brought his back to the table. No one can say any role that he played is unforgettable. It's not. It's not. I can remember all his movies. You know how many movies I've seen and I still can't remember the movies of some people? But for some reason, I can remember all this man's movies. And I didn't have to Google it. Why is that? Because he brought your best to the table. Best offering to the table. Get out of your own way. 
so you can get up. And then we'll get off each other's way. God bless us all I have to say while you be done. We're going to turn it over and hear what Will has to say. I'm looking forward to it. And so, here's where I close out with the great things that you guys just said. Oh, uh, wow. I think one of the first questions you got to ask yourself is, what are you afraid of? What conversations have you been avoiding with yourself? And you know you've been avoiding those conversations with yourself because you're afraid to have those conversations with somebody else. What are you really feeling right now? How have you really been feeling? And then what stories have you been telling others about what you've been feeling? And have the stories you've been telling, do they match up with the truth? Is it the truth? Until we can change how we view truth in our space. And when I say change how we view truth, meaning truth is not your enemy. It may not feel good all the time, but truth is not your enemy. But if we treat truth as if it's something to be avoided as opposed to something to be or someone to be embraced, then we will never truly step into the fullness of what we can offer ourselves to the earth. If you're tired, angry, like they just, they just use a whole bunch of examples, you got to be able to just be honest with it. And when you, how does my yes be yes and my no be no? What does that look like? I don't feel like it. But because I love you or you need me, I will. I don't want to. But God, I feel your prompting, so I'm going to. I'm operating in the spirit of truth and honesty, which allows me not to be burdened by the work or the activity that I'm about to put myself into. I hope that made sense. Because I'm able to speak from a place of purity. See, when, when we're not honest with ourselves or others, we, we, using Jill's words, you muddy up the waters, you mess up the space. It's just like dropping dirt in some, in some water and then telling somebody else to drink it. Don't nobody want your dirty water. Don't nobody want to drink that. So come to me in a pure space. Come to God in a pure space. Here's what I believe we need to pray for right now in this space right now. Not so much about what's going on around us, but I think we need to pray for God help us to stop being afraid of what's going on on the inside. God, I don't want to be afraid of what I'm actually feeling anymore. I don't want to be afraid of my own thoughts. I don't want to be afraid to speak because I may feel like it sounds off. That's why you have safe people to talk to with wisdom. Because if you're off, the truth in them can set you straight. <laughs> and then we can all go on the path of righteousness. And so here's what I want to pray. I want to pray that fear would leave your space. I want to pray that fear leaves your space. Not just your house, but your space. Your space. Your space, I pray that fear leaves your space because we can never grow in spirit and truth as long as we are flowing in a spirit of fear. And so Heavenly Father, it is in your name that I pray sincerely, honestly, thankfully that you will remove us from a place of fear. God, someone under the sound of my voice is afraid to talk about how they truly feel right now, what they truly think right now. Father God, I pray that that fear be removed and that you can be embraced by that person, by all of us, God, so that we can only speak what will bring life to our own lives and to the lives of those that see us and experience us. Father God, I thank you so very much for yet another opportunity to turn our life away from a dark space and bring it into a space where we can let the light that you placed in us shine. God, if somebody under the sound of my voice does not know who you are, I pray right now, God, that you introduce yourself to them as the savior that can save them from all of the darkness that's in their life, save them from their selves. Father God, introduce them to true salvation, which is you. And Father God, if we have walked away from the truth, if we have walked away from your spirit, 
and are living in falsehood. God, I pray that you not give us a spirit of judgment, God, but I pray that you give us a spirit of get up. Father God, help us all to get up from wherever we are right now, God. And when we get up, God, we pray that you give us the strength to remain up and to strengthen our brothers. Father God, I thank you for this moment. I thank you for this word. I thank you for life that so many of us take for granted. Father God, bless the family of Chadwick Bozeman. Father God, bless my family as I lost my grandfather the day before Chadwick died. And Father God, help me to deal with whatever it is that I'm going through mentally but don't understand. But help us all, God, to just embrace what the truth of the matter is and to thank you for it all, knowing that it is all meant for our good. Father God, may everyone in the sound of my voice be edified by the examples of Christ that were shown by the lights that surround us. Father God, bless the pastors. Keep them, strengthen them, give them continual strength in spirit, mind, and body so that we can all continue to bless you in all things. Father God, may you alone be edified in your work on this earth through these vessels, through this ministry called Soul Factory, continue to grow. I thank you very much. I give you glory and honor in the name of Yeshua, also known as Jesus the Christ. We say amen. Amen.